Welcome back. Uh, we dive straight into our first conversation right here on the breakfast. Uh, Central Bank of Nigeria on Sunday, as you all know, extended the deadline for uh, the swapping of the old Naira notes with the redesigned new Naira notes till February 10, 2023. Now, in a press conference, or rather a press release, uh, the CBN governor, Corinne Mayfiele, uh, is quoted as saying the Apex Bank added, quote, a 10-day extension of the deadline from January 31, 2023 to February 10, 2023 to allow uh, for the collection of more old notes. He also noted that Nigerians would still be able to deposit their old, um, still be able to deposit their old notes directly with the Central Bank of Nigeria until February 17, uh, described as, quote, a grace period. Now, there have been pressure, or there has been pressure uh, from many quarters uh, from Nigerians and groups around the country concerning the initial January 31 deadline for the validity of the old Naira notes as the scarcity of the newly designed 200, 500, and 1,000 Naira notes prevailed uh, around the country. Crowds had thronged the banking halls in a bit to beat the deadline, with some commercial banks remaining open through the weekend. Uh, joining us this morning for analysis on this, we have Hussein K. Olari Wajah, who is an economist, particularly he's the chief, national chief aggregating officer, Association of Mobile Money and Bank Agents of Nigeria, in Nigeria, Amman. Um, Hussein, good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. Good morning. Did this extension come to you as a surprise? Um, and are you disappointed or are you happy to see that the CBN has gone uh, ahead to do what it said it wouldn't do just recently, as recently as Thursday? So um, I'm not surprised because uh, we need to work with reality. I believe uh, the extension is needed. As we can see, the CBN record shows that uh, if Nigerians do not see a deadline, we don't see urgency in making things happen or making things work. It has been like 90 days, you know, uh, for us to bring in the old notes, but we can see that it is towards the end that we see the rush. So the extension is needed, and um, the record shows that so far, the CBN has been able to bring back 75% of the money, which is outside the banking vaults. So left with 25%, let's see what that can do, you know. It's a welcome development and is expected because uh, we don't, we, we, we are trying in Nigeria, we don't have that same facility that could uh, enable us to get things done within that short period of time. But it's necessary that it is done. Okay, but uh, I'd like us to, you know, to also look at, you know, the consents of the uh, House of Reps. They have rejected this extension and making reference to section 20, subsection 2, 3, uh, you know, of the CBN Act. What do you make of this? So, you see, when it comes to uh, financial matters, uh, I, I believe the CBN has constitutional authority to do things that best work for the economy. And don't let us forget the fact that uh, if CBN says, uh, bring out a policy that is meant to strengthen the value of the economy, and they go back and trick it again. What it means is uh, even foreign direct investment, people will, will question their action, that credibility of what they are uh, expected to do. Mind you, there is always monthly uh, monetary policy committee review. There are servers meetings before they can come out to say this is what we intend to achieve. For me, I think um, the house are scared. You know, I, I could say some of them, or probably serving or retired, have been stocking this money in the house. So I am seeing more of a personal uh, sentiments playing out about their their position in what we have today. I think there are not many the, the matter as it is, and um, that has been their arguments that have been hiding under. 
Okay, Messi, you have another yeah, question? Yes, it's okay. just a follow-up to this conversation. I mean, if you look at the act, there, yeah, I really don't know if you have, you know, you have looked at this section of uh, that the House of Representatives have made reference to section 20, uh, subsection 3, 4, and 5 of the act, that was CBN Act. And it, it, it's, you know, it, it speaks to authority. It also speaks to acceptance. There are several issues as one well of this. I, I, I'd like us to, you know, talk more about it. Do you think that this is a very valid stance for, don't forget that, I mean, we're not in a jungle. The rule of law must be respected. So, so do you think that the CBN governor and the CBN itself has acted, you know, in accordance with the provision of the law? So when it comes to the law, like, Nigerian constitution can actually be interpreted to suit the, the situation we they want to suit, right? But uh, constitutionally, I, I believe uh, the responsibility of the House is to scrutinize who is being presented to head or to lead firms like CBN. And when it comes to authority of economy, I believe the, the president has more power, executive power, to make things happen because if we are talking about uh, uh, the growth, the reality of what the impact of all this policy will come to be, it will definitely hit back more of to the executive than the legislative. So they can trick it to fit what uh, actually fit them. If the, the best they have to do, they've done it, which is to invite the CBN governor, which was uh, which he was ably represented by the deputy civil governor to explain the reason why this kind of policy are being put in place and the effect on the economy. So I think that is their jurisdiction. Hmm. They should work with that. Interesting. Um, uh, you know, it, it, it was it was it could have been predicted and it was predicted by a lot of people, myself inclusive. And you said yourself. Um, that you weren't surprised uh, with this extension. Looking at the antecedent of the CBN, throughout this narrow swap and also cash withdrawal policy um, uh, deadline or limits, as they said, they kept changing and shifting and adjusting and extending. So a lot of people could predict that they were going to extend this deadline, even though Gaudi Mifili addressed a press conference saying, you know, he is sorry to disappoint Nigeria as he apologizes but there is no going back. Um, do you think the CBN went about this the right way? Bearing in mind um, the, the rush, you said we, we like waiting wait in the last minute, but you know that the commercial banks were open through the weekend. A lot of staff went to work uh, uh, for going their weekend off days, and um, they were only they were, they, were, they were at work when they were greeted or they had they got the news, saw it probably online on Twitter or Instagram, that oh, on WhatsApp, that they've accepted the deadline. Oh. And some of the bank workers I've had the opportunity to interface with have said that they were highly disappointed because they left their uh, two days off to go sit in the banking hall, sacrifice those days just to make sure that they got the job done. Also, we have some business people who are lamenting, saying they rejected the new Naira notes on Sunday because they did not want to be caught off guard when they went to the bank. Maybe they'll be in a queue and the deadline will pass and all that. So should the bank, the Apex Bank, have gone about this a different way, ahead of time? If you know you're going to extend this thing, at least on Friday, tell Nigerians, okay, we're extending it by 12 days, instead of waiting till the last minute. Uh, so it's, it's, it's funny, right? Just like you said, I'm, I'm not really surprised. But you see, the attitude of Nigerians to change, it's very difficult. And there, there are things that you need to put in place, you know, to not uh, let them feel relaxed. So I, I believe it's a timing extension. And uh, yes, it's, it's not going to go well with the workers of the bank. Yes, uh, it's not going to go well with the general public. But the, the, the interesting part of it is, People are forced to do the needful, you know. And I could tell you, it's really affected a lot of amendments that we are also seeking, uh, looking at it from the association level, because the agents uh, who are meant to serve the rural areas, the underbank, are, are not really well categorized to even participate. Yes, they're doing cash swap and 
what have you. So there are a lot of people in the rural areas who are also caught out. I can tell you that there are a lot of policy uh, amendment that needs to be looked into, like the cash swap program started 23rd of January, which is very close, just like seven days to the end of uh, the initial deadline. So there are a lot of pressure, yes. We, we are not going to uh, lie about the fact that it's not convenient, it is uh, is tiring, but to be told, Nigerians, the best way to make things work in Nigeria is to enforce and to make things, you know, a little bit um, real, you know, forced before we can change, before we can move to do the needful. I think that's what just played out. That's what I can see from my end. I'd like you to speak to the school of thoughts. Uh, it's making the rounds and it might also become a reality, especially when, you know, the CBN governor has not spoken to that or the CBN itself has not addressed this issue of non-availability. Now, you have a school of thought that says that the reason why you have this cash, the new Naira note, not available is because uh, politicians have been in bed with bank managers, and that's why it's not available. So you have politicians who have, uh, and bank managers who have, you know, come to some sort of consensus and they have gone to buy this note, and that's why you don't have that in circulation, uh, which also stated that there was also a report back to the president by the CBN governor, and that's why we are having the back and forth, the scarcity of the new note. What do you make of this? Um, well, uh, it's, uh, like you said, it's more like a rumor. And the reality is um, I was part of the International Financial Inclusion Week held in November last year. And the CBN government categorically states that the new NERA design note, most especially the higher domination, the likes of 500, 1,000 NERA notes, will be limited in terms of printing. And it is a deliberate act. And also... The CBN governor said uh, that uh, the, after the deadline, the ATM machine are uh, to be loaded with 200 Naira maximum, uh, that, that's the highest domination notes on all ATM machine. So what they are trying to do is to ensure that the cash that are being uh, stuck in the house are not taken back to the economy, like return back then you will now start looking for it again. So, and I, for me, in, in uh, reality, is a good policy. So what this will help us to achieve is to track corruption, to address the issue of insecurity, because ransom are paid with higher domination of, uh, of narrow notes. So if we don't have, you don't have record, when cash is exchanged, there is lots of data, and that is a concern for any, you know, any uh, serious economy or any serious society. Because you don't know how to track. If you want to do security concern, if you want to track who does this, how, when, you don't have data. Data is lost. So what we are trying to say, what he's trying to achieve is to ensure that we have every of the narrow notes or every of our currency monitored such that if there is any insecurity, any funding for uh, terrorism, corruption, laundry, and stuff like that can easily be cited. So it's a welcome development. But again, I say the policy needs some little amendments to entertain some realities. Like I give you an example. When you say uh, the maximum you can withdraw on a POS machine is 20000 with the reality of things, like cost of rice, for example, is like 40, 46,000 naira. So are you saying you have to pay three, four times if you are used, if you have to pay with your ATM card? So this is not working with the reality in the market as of today. So there are a little bit of adjustments that needs to be done on this policy. But for saying the higher domination, it's a deliberate action and it is a welcome development if we truly want to move ahead from where we used to be to where we ought and expected to be. What, what are your thoughts on, on the roles the commercial banks are playing in all of this? Because, I mean, yes, we always talk about the Central Bank of Nigeria. We talk about Gordon Mayfield. 
Um, but but you know the central bank has said you know a number of times that they have made sufficient supply of the new naira notes available to the commercial banks and that they expect the banks to give these out. And um, I mean we've seen the reports of some uh, staff of the commercial of the central bank of Nigeria going to banks you know, to query the banks and to inspect and to find out why people are complaining of unavailability of the new naira notes at the ATMs and, and, and so on and so forth. Um, we've also seen viral videos of um, people being given preferential treatment in the cash swap uh, at the banks. What are your thoughts on the role of the, the, the commercial banks? Because as, as, as it stands, the central bank is saying they're going to hand, they've actually handed these videos over to the EFCC and ICPC, and they um, are re requesting that the EFCC and ICPC deploy their personnel uh, to the commercial banks over the next 10 days to ensure that there is fairness and equitable distribution of these new narrow notes. So what are your thoughts on the role of these commercial banks? Because we've also seen videos of people in this country spraying, like we call it, the new narrow notes, even in bundles. We've had reports of, of those who normally sell Mint, mint, new crisp mint, new Nara notes, um, selling them at the central business district in Lagos and outside event centers in Lagos. How are they getting their hands on these notes when the majority of people are complaining they do not have access to the new Nara notes? So, uh, thank you. Like I said earlier, the new Nara note is limited, right? Uh, most of the when it comes to the higher domination. Um, I can say so. In some states, they get the allocation very late. However, the CBN governor also noted that um, it has been noticed across the country that some, some preferential treatment are given to some individuals who are withdrawing over the counter. And in response to that, the CBN also sent a notification, a memo out that over the counter withdrawal should be stopped for new mirror notes. Right. And also, in response to that, the CBN governor also uh, accredited like 30,000 agents registered on that different super agent network across the country to participate in the cash swap. I think these are the development that came around in January 23 to curb the excesses of the bank. Yes, people are doing uh, favoritism, you know, it's Nigeria, and um, which is not good. So to cut that SSCs, they come up with another framework, get 30,000 people to go to the internet, which are the more rural areas to do the cash swap, stop the over-the-counter over the transactions, and then I can confirm to you that yeah, part of uh, agent network that have been in this, have, uh, we have ICPC, EFCC on grant, monitoring the situation, both in bank and on field. Because even those who are doing cash swap, as individual, they are not allowed to do more than 10,000 per individual withdrawal per day uh, with the cash swap. So there, there are some pluses to the cash swap. So I, I believe the CBN is trying to respond as quick as possible. Yeah. So, so do, you, do you agree that the, the commercial banks are largely responsible for the so-called scarcity of the new Naira notes? Uh, I want to disagree. Because the new Naira note is also limited in, in print, right? And they're, they are, they are, as they are getting the allocation, I believe they are also loading the ATM machine. So the allocation is not as expected from uh, the populace, you know? It's just well, like saying you... Uh, I, I really don't know how, you know, that's the case. I mean, this is not uh, a picture that we're trying to paint from, let's say, Iraq or... Uh, Ukraine right there. We're not trying to tell a story or telling something that's happening. It's first hand. Every other time. I mean, there's a bank that's close to this office. If I walk in there, two things I would experience this morning. I might get money and the kind of money I will get will be the old notes or, you know, they probably will not be dispensing at the time. Now we have seen, just like Kofi had mentioned, there are people who are, you know, throwing this note. You find people, I've seen, we've seen actresses who are married to politicians Putting out this note, they are showing it. Oh, my husband gave me X, Y, Z. They are new notes. You go to the parties, you find people, uh, this vendors selling new notes. They have mints. 
we hear of the stories, people buy it. They pay so much to get this note. So I, I really don't know if it's mostly the case that it's not the commercial banks that are responsible for this. I don't know how we explain all of that because we know that these notes have been chunked out into the system. But, you know, along the line, it's been, there's been a compromise. But I, I'd like you to speak to this just quickly. This might just be oh, the so last. Because, we, we, because we don't have time. Exactly. What becomes so, of our yeah. economy if we don't have... I mean, let's, I'd like you to paint a picture of what kind of economy we will be experiencing. Where we have the new notes not in circulation. And then we are going to, you know, get to the point where uh, the old notes will no longer become a legal tender. What exactly is going to happen to us? Non-availability so, of the new note and meeting the deadline of the old note. Thank you. What I'm saying is, before January 23rd, yes, people have had the opportunity to do over the counter uh, withdrawals and do uh, based on uh, probably SSS of the bank staffs and what have you to get this NERA note. But it is in response to this reality that the CBN came up with the restriction of over-the-counter withdrawal should be stopped, of course. And since then, it has reduced. And since then, you can see, before January 23rd, there are very limited banks who have uh, access to this cash, who have even loaded their ATM machine with the new uh, notes. You see, you still see them loading the old notes, right? So after this, you can see that there is improvement. It's not readily available. I can confirm to you, like Osho State, as at Wednesday, out of those agents that are expected to do the cash swap, the branch uh, manager of some banks have confirmed they have not even received allocation. They received allocation late on Wednesday. So it is not readily available in some locations, right? So I, I believe uh, it's an ongoing process and there is need for improvement to ensure things work out as expected. All right. Uh, very interesting conversation uh, with you this morning and uh, Hussein, we hope to have you again soon on the program. We appreciate your time. Thank Hussein you. Olari Waju is an economist and also the National Chief Aggregating Officer of the Association of Mobile Money and Bank Agents of Nigeria. Um, I appreciate it. I don't know if you're one of the super agents. Um, I don't know if also the POS operators have something to do with your association, but uh, you seem to have a be chill about everything. So I'm sure that um, <laughs> there is no complaint, no cause for alarm from your end. There, there, there is actually complaints because uh, the limitation are for individual withdrawal is what is also given to an agent. So you're asking an agent to serve just 50 people so, uh, in a week. And once you serve the 50 people in a week, you should go and sleep. Maybe. Yes, you, you, you yeah. what we call it, pay penalty of 5%, right. 3%, you know, or we, what have you. We have to go. That will definitely impact on, on the public. Maybe, you, maybe people you have to just go go, go go pay a courtesy call on the Central Bank government. So we, we've we been there. We've been there and we're still talking. All right, we're fantastic. Talking. Thank you very much for your time. And uh, that's the size of that discussion. Up next, we'll be having a look at uh, the fact that the federal government of Nigeria, in the midst of all that's happening, is allot allotting 1.18 billion now for autonomies, or autonomy rather, in Nigerian universities. What's up with that? We'll be right back. Stay tuned.